Hey guys, the simple student here. Welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to write a Java program using recursion to print out the Fibonacci numbers. So first of all, what are the Fibonacci numbers? Well, basically it's a sequence of numbers where the next number is the sum of the previous two. So it starts off with 0, 1. So the sum of 0 and 1 is 1. Then the next number is the sum of the previous two, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. The next number is 2 plus 1, which is 3. The next number is 3 plus 2, which is 5. 5 plus 3, which is 8. 8 plus 5, which is 13. 13 plus 8 is 21. And I'm not going to keep doing that, but you get the idea. So, so on, so forth, until n. Okay? So, this is an infinite sequence of numbers, and we're going to try to make a Java program to print these out using recursion. Okay. So now that you know what Fibonacci numbers are, you need to know what recursion is. So basically in programming, recursion occurs whenever you are calling the same function from itself, basically just repeating the same thing over and over again but the inputs to this function are changing every time you call it. Okay, so let's get right on into the programming side of things and see how we get on. Okay, so I've got a class here called Fibonacci. I've got my main method. Before we work in the main method, we're going to make our method that gets the Fibonacci numbers and prints them out. So we're just going to say public static fibble. I'll just call it fibble, okay? And is as input, it's going to need int n1, so this is the first number, int n2, this is the second number, int index, this is how far we're counting up, and int count. Okay, so we're actually taking four numbers as inputs. Okay, what's wrong here? Uh, return to void, yeah, sorry. Okay, so public stack void fibble, and then we've got four inputs. Okay. Now, what goes inside here? Well, we're going to want to count up a certain amount of indexes. So we're going to want to print out a certain amount of Fibonacci numbers. And that's what this index means. And every time we recurse this function or repeat it, we're going to want to increment count by 1 so that it's getting closer to index all the time. And whenever it's the same as index, we want to stop. Okay, so to do that we're going to make an if statement. We're going to say if count is less than index. To make this easier we could actually make this a while loop. So we'll just say while count is less than index. So it's just going to keep repeating this while count is less than index. Okay, so while count is less than index, what do we want to do? Well, we want to make a new integer called new number and this is going to equal n1 plus n2. So this is going to be our new number. Okay, and what we want to do with this new number, we want to print it out. So we're going to say system dot out dot print line and we want to print out new number plus a space. Okay, just to leave things easier. And what do you want to do then? We want to call this fibble function again, but this time the inputs are going to be n2 as the first number, new num as the second number, and then we want the same index again, so index isn't going to change, but we're going to increment count by 1. Okay, So count is going to be getting closer to index all the time. Sorry, system.out.print, we'll probably not use a new line, we want to keep it all in the same line. So that's really our FIBO method finished. Okay, so let's tidy this up a bit. And now we're going to go inside the main method. Now what are we doing here? Well, basically in here, we're just going to be calling the fibble function, but before we do that, we need to print out the first two Fibonacci numbers. So we want to say system dot out dot print and inside here, we're just going to print um, 0, 1, space. Okay, so that's the first two Fibonacci numbers. That's all we need to do there. And then we just want to call fibble with 0, 1. 
how far we want to count up so we'll just print out the first 10 Fibonacci numbers first and our index is going to start or our count is going to start off as 2 because we've already printed out the first two numbers here 0 and 1 okay so let's run this and see how it works okay whoa what is going on here while that is okay maybe this shouldn't be a while loop I was right first <laughs> because it's just going to keep repeating the whole thing over and over again so we're just going to say if count is less than index sorry about that yeah so it's printing out the first 10 Fibonacci numbers 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21 and 34 yeah that's the first 10 Fibonacci numbers basically as I said this is an infinite sequence of numbers so if you wanted to print out the first 100 Fibonacci numbers we'd be able to do this use the exact same thing Okay. As you can see, it doesn't take long for the Fibonacci numbers to get to very high numbers. So the first 100, basically it's not even an integer anymore. That's why we're getting funny funny numbers over there. Okay, but well you don't need to worry about that, because you'd never need to print out the first 100 Fibonacci numbers. Okay, that's everything really. I might just run through it once more, just to make sure you understand. So to start off with, we made this method, Fibo. had four arguments. One number, second number, an index, and a count. What if count is less than index, we're going to make a new number, which is basically the addition of the two previous numbers. We're going to print out this new number, and then we're going to call this function again. And remember, this is recursion. I might just put a wee comment in here, just to remind myself. So recursion is whenever we're calling this function from itself again, okay? and we're getting closer to the index every time we increment count. Okay, that's it really. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. This has been The Simple Student, and I'll see you next time.